Act One of Timon of Athens by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act One, Scene One Athens, a hall in Timon's house. Enter poet, painter, jeweller, merchant, and others at several doors. Good day, sir. I am glad you're well. I have not seen you long. How goes the world? It worse, sir, as it grows. Ay, that's well known. But what particular rarity, what strange, which manifold record not matches? See, magic of bounty, all these spirits thy power hath conjured to attend. I know the merchant. I know them both. Others a jeweller. Oh, tis a worthy lord. Nay, that's most fixed. A most incomparable man, breathed, as it were, to an untirable and continuous goodness. He passes. I have a jewel here. Oh, pray, let's see it. For the Lord Timon, sir. If he will touch the estimate, but for that. Reciting to himself. When we for recompense have praised the vile, it stains the glory in that happy verse which aptly sings the good tis a good form looking at the jewel and rich here is a water look ye you are wrapped sir in some work some dedication to the great lord a thing slipped idly from me our poesy is as a gum which oozes from whence tis nourished the fire of the flint shows not till it be struck our gentle flame provokes itself and like the current flies each bound it chafes what have you there a picture sir when comes your book for upon the heels of my presentment sir let's see your piece tis a good piece so tis this comes off well and excellent indifferent admirable how this grace speaks his own standing what a mental power this eye shoots forth! How big imagination moves in this lip! To the dumbness of the gesture one might interpret. It is a pretty mocking of the life. Here is a touch. Is't good? I will say of it, it tutors nature. Artificial strife lives in these touches, livelier than life. Enter certain senators, and pass over. How this lord is followed! the senators of athens happy man look more you see this confluence this great flood of visitors i have in this rough work shaped out a man whom this beneath world doth embrace and hug with amplest entertainment my free drift halts not particularly but moves itself in a wide sea of wax no levelled malice infects one comma in the course i hold but flies an eagle flight bold and forth on leaving no tract behind how shall i understand you i will unbolt to you you see how all conditions how all minds as well of glib and slippery creatures as of grave and austere quality tender down their services to lord timon his large fortune upon his good and gracious nature hanging subdues and properties to his love and tendance all sorts of hearts yea from the glass-faced flatterer to apimantus that few things loves better than to abhor himself even he drops down the knee before him and returns in peace most rich in timon's nod i saw them speak together Sir, I have upon a high and pleasant hill feigned fortune to be throned. The base of the mount is ranked with all deserts, all kinds of natures that labor on the bosom of this sphere to propagate their states. Amongst them all, whose eyes are on this sovereign lady fixed, one do I personate of Lord Timon's frame, whom fortune with her ivory hand wafts to her whose present grace to present slaves and servants translates his rivals tis conceived to scope this throne this fortune and this hill methinks with one man beckoned from the rest below 
bowing his head against the sleeping monk to climb his happiness, would be well expressed in our condition. Nay, sir, but hear me on. All those which were his fellows but of late, some better than his value, on the moment follow his strides, his lobbies fill with attendants, rain sacrificial whisperings in his ear, make sacred even his stirrup, and through him drink the free air. Ay, marry, what of these? When fortune in her shift and change of mood spurns down her late beloved, all his dependents which laboured after him to the mountain's top, even on their knees and hands, let him slip down, not one accompanying his declining foot. Tis common. A thousand moral paintings I can show that shall demonstrate these quick blows of fortunes more pregnantly than words. Yet you do well to show Lord Teeman that mean eyes have seen the foot above the head. Trumpets sound. Enter Timon, addressing himself courteously to every suitor. A messenger from Ventilius, talking with him. Lucilius and other servants following. Imprisoned is he, say you? Ay, my good lord, five talents is his debt. His means most short, his creditors most straight. Your honourable letter he desires to those have shut him up, which failing period his comfort. Noble Ventilius, well, I am not of that feather to shake off my friend when he must need me. I do know him a gentleman that well deserves the help, which he shall have. I'll pay the debt and free him. Your lordship ever bind him. Commend me to him. I will send his ransom. And being enfranchised, bid him come to me. Tis not enough to help the feeble up, but to support him after. Fare you well. All happiness to your honour. Exit. Enter an old Athenian. Lord Tyburn, hear me speak. Freely, good father. Thou hast a servant named Lucilius. I have so. What of him? Most noble Timon, call the man before thee. Attends he here or no? Lucilius! Here at your lordship's service. This fellow here, Lord Timon, this, thy creature, by night frequents my house. I am a man that from my fast have been inclined to thrift, and my state deserves an heir more raised than one which holds a trencher. Well, what further? One only daughter have I, no kin else, on whom I may confer what I have got. The maid is fair or the youngest for a bride, and I have bred her at my dearest cost, in qualities of the best. This man of thine attempts her love. I prithee, noble lord, join with me to forbid him her resort. Myself have spoke in vain. The man is honest. Therefore he will be, Tyburn. His honesty rewards him in itself. It must not bear my daughter. Does she love him? She is young and apt. Our own precedent passions do instruct us. What liberties in youth! To Lucilius. Love you the maid? Ay, my good lord, and she accepts of it. If in her marriage my consent be missing, I call the gods to witness, I will choose my heir from forth the beggars of the world, and dispossess her all. How shall she be endowed if she be mated with an equal husband? Three talents on the present, in future all. This gentleman of mine hath served me long. To build his fortune I will strain a little, for tis a bond in main. Give him thy daughter. What you bestow, in him I'll counterpoise, and make him way with her. Most noble lord, pawn me to this your honour. She is his. My hand to thee, mine honour and my promise. Humbly I thank your lordship. Never may the state or fortune fall into my keeping, which is not owed to you. Exeunt Lucilius and old Athenian. Vouchsafe my labour and long live your lordship. 
I thank you. You shall hear from me anon. Go not away. What have you there, my friend? A piece of painting, which I do beseech your lordship to accept. Painting is welcome. The painting is almost the natural man, for since dishonour traffics with man's nature, he is but outside. These pencilled figures are even such as they give out. I like your work, and you shall find I like it. Wait attendance till you hear further from me. The gods preserve ye. Well fare you, gentlemen. Give me your hand. We must needs dine together. Sir, your jewel hath suffered under praise. What, my lord, dispraise? A mere satiety of commendations. If I should pay you for it as tis extolled, it would unclue me quite. My lord, tis rated as those which sell would give. But you will know things of like value differing in their owners are prized by their masters. Belief, dear lord, you mend the jewel by the wearing it. Well mocked. No, my good lord, he speaks the common tongue, which all men speak with him. Look, who comes here? Will you be chid? Enter Apimantus. He'll spare none. Good morrow to thee, gentle Apimantus. <laughs> Till I be gentle, stay thou for thy good morrow. When thou art Timon's dog, and these knaves honest. Why dost thou call them knaves? Thou knowest them not. Are they not Athenians? Yes. Then I repent not. You know me, Epimedus? Thou knowest I do. I call thee by thy name. Thou art proud, Epimedus. Of nothing so much as that I am not like Timon. Whither art going? Oh, to knock out an honest Athenian's brains. That's a deed thou'lt die for. Right, if doing nothing be death by the law. How likes thou this picture, Epimentus? The best for the innocents. Wrought he not well that painted it? He wrought better that made the painter, and yet he's but a filthy piece of work. You're a dog. Thy mother's of my generation. What's she if I be a dog? Wilt dine with me, Epimentus? No, I eat not lords. And thou shouldst, thou wouldst anger ladies. Oh, they eat lords, so they come by great bellies. That's a lascivious apprehension. So thou apprehendest it. Take it for thy labour. How dost thou like this jewel, Apimantus? Not so well as plain dealing, which will not cost a man a doit. What dost thou think tis worth? Not worth my thinking. How now, poet? How now, philosopher? Thou liest. Art not one? Yes. Then I lie not. Art not a poet? Yes. Then thou liest. Look in thee last work, where thou hast feigned him a worthy fellow. That's not feigned, he is so. Yes, he is worthy of thee, and to pay thee for thy labour. He that loves to be flattered is worthy of the flatterer. Ah, oh, heavens, that I were a lord! What wouldst do then, Epimantus? E'en as Epimantus does now, hate a lord with me heart. What, thyself? Ay. Wherefore? That I had no angry wit to be a lord. Art not thou a merchant? A eh, Epimantus. Traffic, confound thee, if the gods will not. If traffic do it, the gods do it. Traffic's thy god, and thy god confound thee. Trumpet sounds. Enter a messenger. What trumpet's that? Tis Alcibiades and some tawny horse, all of companionship. Pray entertain them, give them guide to us. Exhaunt some attendance. You must needs dine with me. Go not you hence till I have thanked you. When dinner's done, show me this piece. I am joyful of your sights. Enter Alcibiades with the rest. Most welcome, sir. So, so, there are. Oh, eggs contract and starve your supple joints. That there should be small love amongst these sweet knaves and all this courtesy. The strain of man's bred out into baboon and monkey. <laughs> Sir, you have saved my longing, and I feed most hungrily on your sight. Right welcome, sir. 
ere we depart we'll share a bounteous time in different pleasures pray you let us in exhort all except apaimantus enter two lords what time o day is apaimantus time to be honest that time serves still the more accursed thou that still omitst it thou art going to lord timon's feast ay to see meat fill knaves and wine hate foals fare thee well fare thee well <laughs> thou art a fool to bid me farewell twice why apamantus shouldst have kept one to this self for i mean to give thee none hang thyself no i will do nothing at thy bidding make thy requests to thy friend away unpeaceable dog or i'll spurn thee hence i will fly like a dog the heels of the ass exit he's opposite to humanity come shall we in and taste lord timon's bounty he outgoes the very heart of kindness he pours it out plutus the god of gold is but his steward no mead but he repays sevenfold above itself no gift to him but breeds the giver a return exceeding all use of quittance the noblest mind he carries that ever governed man long may he live in fortunes shall we in i'll keep you company exeunt act one scene two a banqueting room in timon's house hautboys playing loud music a great banquet served in flavius and others attending then enter timon alcibiades lords senators and ventidius then comes dropping after all apaimantus discontentedly like himself most honoured timon it hath pleased the gods to remember my father's age and call him to long peace he is gone happy and has left me rich then as in grateful virtue i am bound to your free heart i do return those talents doubled with thanks and service from whose help i derived liberty oh by no means honest ventidius you mistake my love i gave it freely ever and there's none can truly say he gives if he receives if our betters play at that game we must not dare to imitate them false that are rich are fair a noble spirit they all stand ceremoniously looking at timon nay my lords ceremony was but devised at first to set a gloss on faint deeds hollow welcomes recanting goodness sorry ere tis shown but where there is true friendship there needs none pray sit more welcome are ye to my fortunes than my fortunes to me they sit my lord we always have confessed it oh confessed it and it have you not Oh, Apamantus, you are welcome. No, you shall not make me welcome. I come to have thee thrust me out of doors. Fie, thou art a churl. You've got a humour there does not become a man. Tis much to blame. They say, my lords, ere a fool or brevis est, but yon man is ever angry. Go, let him have a table by himself, for he does neither affect company, nor is he fit for it indeed. Let me stay at thine apparel, Timon i come to observe i give thee warning aunt i take no heed of thee thou art an athenian therefore welcome i myself would have no power prithee let my meat make thee silent ah scorn thee meat to choke me for i should ne'er flatter thee oh you gods what a number of men eat timon and he sees em not it grieves me to see so many dip their mate in one man's blood and all the madness is he cheers em up too i wonder men dare trust themselves with men methinks they should invite them without knives good for their meat and safer for their lives there's much example for it the fellow that sits next him now parts bread with him pledges the breath of him in a divided draught is the readiest man to kill him tas been proved if i were a huge man i should fear to drink at meals 
lest they should spy my windpipe's dangerous notes <laughs> great men should drink with alice on their throats my lord in heart and let the health go round let it flow this way my good lord flow this way a brave fellow he keeps his tides well those else will make thee and the state look ill timon here's that which is too weak to be a sinner honest water which ne'er left man i the mire this and me food are equals there's no odds feasts are too proud to give thanks to the gods <sighs> apimantus's grace immortal gods i crave no pelf i pray for no man but myself grant i may never prove so fond to trust man on his oath or bond or a harlot for a weeping or a dog that seems a sleeping or a keeper with my freedom or oh, my friends if i should need em <coughs> amen so fall to it rich men sin and i eat root eats and drinks <coughs> much good ditch the good art apimantus captain alcibiades your heart's in the field now my heart is ever at your service my lord you had rather be at a breakfast of enemies than a dinner of friends so they were bleeding new my lord there's no meat like em i wish my best friend at such a feast would all these flatterers were thine enemies then that then thou mightst kill em and bid me to em <laughs> might we but have that happiness my lord that you would once use our hearts whereby we might express some part of our seals we should think ourselves for ever perfect oh no doubt my good friends but the gods themselves have provided that i shall have much help from you how had you been my friends else why have you that charitable title from thousands did not you chiefly belong to my heart i have told more of you to myself than you can with modesty speak in your own behalf and thus far i confirm you o oh, you gods think i what need we have any friends if we should ne'er have need of em they were the most needless creatures living should we ne'er have use for em and would most resemble sweet instruments hung up in cases that keep their sounds to themselves why i have often wished myself poorer that i might come nearer to you we are born to do benefits and what better or proper can we call our own than the riches of our friends oh what a precious comfort is to have so many like brothers commanding one another's fortunes oh joy e'en made away ere it can be born mine eyes cannot hold out water methinks to forget their faults i drink to you oh thou weepest to make them drink timon joy had the like conception in our eyes and at that instant like a babe sprung up oh, i laugh to think that babe a bastard i promise you my lord you moved me much much tuck it within what means that trump enter a servant how now please you my lord there are certain ladies most desirous of admittance ladies what are their wills there comes with them a forerunner my lord which bears that office to signify their pleasures i pray let them be admitted enter cupid hail to thee worthy timon and to all that of his bounty's taste the five best senses acknowledge thee their patron and come freely to gratulate thy plenteous bosom the ear taste touch and smell pleased from thy tale rise they only now come but to feast thine eyes they are welcome all let them have kind admittance music make their welcome exit cupid you see my lord how ample you're beloved music re-enter cupid with a mask of ladies as amazons with lutes in their hands dancing and playing <laughs> what a sweep of vanity comes this way 
they dance they're mad women like madness is the glory of this life as this pomp shows to a little oil and root we make ourselves fools to disport ourselves and spend our flatteries to drink those men upon whose age we void it up again with poisonous spite and envy <sighs> who lives that's not depraved or depraves who dies that bears not one spurn to their graves of their friend's gift i should fear those that dance before me now would one day stamp upon me tas been done men shut their doors against a setting sun the lords rise from the table with much adoring of timon and to show their loves each singles out an amazon and all dance men with women a lofty strain or two to the hot boys and cease you who have done our pleasures much grace fair ladies set a fair fashion on our entertainment which was not half so beautiful and kind you have added worth unto it and lustre and entertained me with mine own device i am to thank you for it my lord you take us even at the best faith for the worst is filthy and would not old tekin i doubt me ladies there is an idle banquet attends you please to dispose yourselves most thankfully my lord exeunt cupid and ladies flavius my lord the little casket bring me hither yes my lord aside more jewels yet there is no crossing him in humour else i should tell him well if faith i should when all spent he'll be crossed then and he could tis pity bounty had not eyes behind that man might ne'er be wretched for his mind exit where be our men here my lord in readiness our horses re-enter flavius with the casket o oh, my friends i have one word to say to you look you my good lord i must entreat you honour me so much as to advance this jewel accept it and wear it kind my lord i am so far already in your gifts so, so are we all. all enter a servant my lord there are certain nobles of the senate newly alighted and come to visit you they are fairly welcome i beseech your honour vouchsafe me a word it does concern you near near why then another time i'll hear thee i prithee let's be provided to show them entertainment aside i scarce know how enter a second servant may it please your honour lord lucius out of his free love hath presented to you four milk-white horses trapped in silver i shall accept them fairly let the presence be worthily entertained enter a third servant how now what news please you my lord that honourable gentleman lord lucullus entreats your company to-morrow to hunt with him and has sent your honour two brace of greyhounds i'll hunt with him and let them be received not without fair reward aside what will this come to he commands us to provide and give great gifts and all out of an empty coffer nor will he know his purse or yield me this to show him what a beggar his heart is being of no power and make his wishes good his promises fly so beyond his state that what he speaks is all in debt he owes for every word he is so kind that he now pays interest for it his lands put to their books well would i were gently put out of office before i were forced out happier is he that has no friend to feed that such do an enemies exceed i bleed inwardly for my lord exit you do yourselves much wrong you bear too much of your own merits here my lord a trifle of our love with more than common thanks i will receive it oh he's the very soul of bounty and now i remember my lord you gave good words the other day of a bay courser i rode on it is yours because you liked it oh i beseech you pardon me my lord in that you may take my word my lord i know no man can justly praise but what he does affect i weigh my friend's affection with mine own i'll tell you true i'll call to you oh, oh none, none so, so well welcome, welcome. I take all and your several visitations so kind to heart tis not enough to give methinks i could deal kingdoms to my friends and ne'er be weary 
Alcibiades, thou art a soldier, therefore seldom rich, it comes in charity to thee. For all thy living is amongst the dead, and all the lands thou hast lie in a pitched field. Ay, defiled land, my lord. We are so virtuously bound. And so am I to you. So infinitely endeared. All to you. Lights, more lights. The best of happiness, honour, and fortunes keep with you, Lord Timon. Ready for his friends. Exaunt all but Apimantus and Timon. Oh, what a coil's here! Serving of backs and jutting out of bums. I doubt whether the legs be worth the sums that are given for em. Friendship's full of dregs. Methinks false arts should never have sound legs. Thus honest fools lay out their wealth on curtsies. Now, Epimantus, if thou wert not sullen, I would be good to thee. No, thou nothing. But if I should be bribed too, there would be none left to rail upon thee, and then thou wouldst sin the faster. Thou givest so long, Timon, I fear me thou wilt give away this self in paper shortly. What needs these feasts, pomps, and vain glories? Nay, and you begin to rail on society once, I am sworn not to give regard to you. Farewell, and come with better music. Exit. So, thou wilt not hear me now. Thou shalt not then. I'll lock thy heaven from thee. Ah, oh, that men's ears should be to counsel death, but not to flattery. Ugh. Exit. End of Act One. Act Two of Timon of Athens by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One. A Senator's House. Enter Senator, with papers in his hand. And late five thousand? To Varro and to Isidore he owes nine thousand, besides my former sum, which makes it five and twenty still in motion of raging waste it cannot hold it will not if i want gold steal but a beggar's dog and give it timon why the dog coins gold if i would sell my horse and buy twenty more better than he why give my horse to timon ask nothing give it him it folds me straight and able horses no porter at his gate but rather one that smiles and still invites all that pass by it cannot hold no reason confound his state in safety caiphas ho caiphas i say enter caiphas here sir what's your pleasure get on your cloak and haste you to lord timon importune him for my monies be not ceased with slight denial nor then silenced when commend me to your master and the cap plays in the right hand thus but tell him my uses cry to me i must serve my turn out of mine own his days and times are past, and my reliances on his fracted dates have smit my credit. I love and honour him, but must not break my back to heal his finger. Immediate are my needs, and my relief must not be tossed and turned to me in words, but find supply immediate. Get you gone. Put on a most importunate aspect, a visage of demand for i do fear when every feather sticks in its own wing lord timon will be left a naked gull which flashes now a phoenix get you gone i go sir i go sir take the bonds along with you and have the dates in contempt i will sir go Exeunt. act two scene two the same a hall in timon's house enter flavius with many bills in his hand no care no stop so senseless of expense that he will neither know how to maintain it nor cease his flow of riot takes no account how things go from him nor resumes no care of what is to continue 
never mind, was it to be so unwise, to be so kind? What shall be done? He will not hear, till feel, I must be round with him, now he comes from hunting. Fie, 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 fie. Enter Caiphus, and the servants of Isador and Varro. Good even, Varro. What, you come for money? Is not your business too? It is, and yours too, Isidore. It is so. Would we were all discharged. I fear it. Here comes the Lord. Enter Timon, Alcibiades, and lords, and company. So soon as dinner's done, we'll forth again, my Alcibiades. With me, what is your will? My lord, here is a note of certain dues. Dues? Whence are you? Of Athens, here, my lord. Go to my steward. Please it, your lordship. He hath put me off to the succession of new days this month. My master is awaked by great occasion to call upon his own, and humbly prays you that with your other noble parts your suit in giving him his right. Mine honest friend, I prithee, but repair to me next morning. Nay, good my lord. Contain thyself, good friend. One Varro's servant, my good lord. From Isidore, he humbly prays your speedy payment. If you did know, my lord, my master's wants, and I am sent expressly to your lordship. Twas due on forfeiture, my lord, six weeks and past. Your steward puts me off, my lord and I am sent expressly to your lordship. Give me breath. I do beseech you, good my lords, keep on. I'll wait upon you instantly. Exaunt Alcibiades and lords. To Flavius. Come hither, pray you. How goes the world, that I am thus encountered with clamorous demands of date-broke bonds, and the detention of long-since due debts against my honour? Please you, gentlemen, the time is unagreeable to this business. Your importunacy cease till after dinner then i may make his lordship understand wherefore you are not paid do so my friends see them well entertained exit pray draw near exit enter apimantus and fool stay stay here comes the fool with apimantus let's have some sport with him hang him he'll abuse us a plague upon him dog how dost fool dost dialogue with thy shadow I speak not to thee. No, it is to this self. To the fool. Come away. There's the fool hangs on your back already. No, thou stand'st single. Thou'rt not on him yet. <laughs> Where's the fool now? He last asked the question. Poor rogues and usurers, men. Boards between gold and want. What, what are, are we, Apollantus? Asses. Why? Why? That you ask me what you are, and do not know yourselves. <laughs> Speak to em, fool. How do you, gentlemen? From the good, good fool. fool. How, How does, does your mistress? She's e'en setting on water to scald such chickens as you are. Would we could see you at Corinth. God, grand mercy. Enter page. Look you, here comes my mistress, page to the fool why how now captain what do you in this wise company how dost thou apimentus would i had a rod in my mouth that i might answer thee profitably privy apimentus read me the superscription of these letters i know not which is which canst not read no <laughs> there will little learning die then that day thou art hanged this is to lord timon this to alcibiades go thou wast born a bastard and thou'lt die aboard thou wast whelped a dog and thou shalt famish a dog's death answer not i am gone exit <laughs> e'en so thou outrunnest grace fool i will go with you to lord timon's will you leave me there if time and stay at home you three serve three usurers Aye, would they have served us? us so would i as good a trick as ever hangman served thief are you three usurers men Aye, Aye, fool. Fool. i think no usurer but has a fool to his servant my mistress is one and i am her fool 
when men come to borrow of your masters they approach sadly and go away merry but they enter my mistress house merrily and go away sadly the reason of this i could render one to it then that we may account thee a hua master and a knave <laughs> which notwithstanding thou shalt be no less esteemed what is a whoremaster fool a fool in good clothes and something like thee tis a spirit sometime it appears like a lord sometime like a lawyer sometime like a philosopher with two stones more than that artificial one he is very often like a knight and generally in all shapes that man goes up and down in from fourscore to thirteen the spirit walks in thou art not altogether a fool nor thou altogether a wise man as much foolery as i have so much wit thou lackest oh that answer might have become apimantus aside aside here comes lord timon re-enter timon and flavius oh, come with me fool come i do not always follow lover elder brother and woman sometime the philosopher exeunt apimantus and fool pray you walk near i'll speak with you anon exeunt servants you make me marvel wherefore ere this time had you not fully laid my state before me that i might so have rated my expense as i had leave of means you would not hear me as many leisures i proposed go to perchance some single vantages you took when my indisposition put you back and that unaptness made your minister thus to excuse yourself o oh, my good lord at many times i brought in my accounts laid them before you you would throw them off and say you found them in mine honesty when for some trifling present you have bid me return so much i have shook my head and wept yea against the authority of manners prayed you to hold your hand more close i did endure not seldom nor no slight checks when i have prompted you in the ebb of your estate and your great flow of debts my loved lord though you hear now too late yet now's a time the greatest of your having lacks the half to pay your present debts let all my land be sold tis all engaged some forfeited and gone and what remains will hardly stop the mouth of present dues the future comes apace what shall defend the interim and at length how goes our reckoning to lacedaemon did my land extend o oh, my good lord the world is but a word were it all yours to give it in a breath how quickly were it gone you tell me true if you suspect my husbandry or falsehood call me before the exactest auditors and set me on the proof so the gods bless me when all our offices have been oppressed with riotous feeders when our vaults have wept with drunken spills of wine when every room has blazed with lights and brayed with minstrelsy i have retired me to a wasteful cock and set mine eyes at flow prithee no more heavens have i said the bounty of this lord how many prodigal bits have slaves and peasants this night in glutted who is not timon's what heart head sword force means but his lord timon's great timon noble worthy royal timon ah when the means are gone that buy this praise the breath is gone whereof this praise is made feast won fast lost one cloud of winter showers these flies are couched come sermon me no further no villainous bounty hath yet passed my heart unwisely not ignobly have i given why dost thou weep canst thou the conscience lack to think i shall lack friends secure thy heart if i would broach the vessels of my love and try the argument of hearts by borrowing men and men's fortunes could i frankly use as i can bid thee speak assurance bless your thoughts and in some sort these wants of mine are crowned that i account them blessings for by these shall i try friends you shall perceive how you mistake my fortunes i am wealthy in my friends Within there, Flaminius, Servilius. Enter Flaminius, Servilius, and other servants. My, my lord, lord, my, my lord. lord. I will dispatch you severally. You to Lord Lucius, to Lord Lucullus you, I hunted with his honour today. You to Sempronius, commend me to their loves, and I am proud, say, that my occasions have found time to use them toward a supply of money. 
let the request be fifty talents as you have said my lord aside lord lucius and lucillus hum to a servant go you sir to the senators of whom even to the state's best health i have deserved this hearing bid em send at the instant a thousand talents to me i have been bold for that i knew it the most general way to them to use your signet and your name but they do shake their heads and i am here no richer in return is it true can be they answer in a joint and corporate voice that now they are at fall want treasure cannot do what they would are sorry you are honourable but yet they could have wished they know not something hath been amiss a noble nature may catch a wrench would all were well tis pity and so intending other serious matters after distasteful looks and these hard fractions with certain half-caps and cold-moving nods they froze me into silence you gods reward them prithee man look cheerly these old fellows have their ingratitude in them hereditary their blood is caked tis cold it seldom flows tis lack of kindly warmth they are not kind and nature as it grows again toward earth is fashioned for the journey dull and heavy to a servant go to ventidius to flavius prithee be not sad thou art true and honest ingenuously i speak no blame belongs to thee to a servant ventidius lately buried his father by whose death he stepped into a great estate when he was poor imprisoned and in scarcity of friends i cleared him with five talents greet him from me bid him suppose some good necessity touches his friend which craves to be remembered with those five talents exit servant to flavius that head give these fellows to whom tis instant due ne'er speak or think that timon's fortunes mong his friends can sink i would i could not think it that thought is bounty's foe being free itself it thinks all others so exeunt end of act two Act Three of Timon of Athens by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One A room in Lucullus' house. Flaminius waiting. Enter a servant to him i have told my lord of you he is coming down to you i thank you sir enter lucullus here's my lord aside one of lord dimmon's men a gift i warrant why this hits right i dreamt of a silver basin and you were to-night flaminius honest flaminius you are very respectably welcome sir fill me some wine exit servants and how does that honourable complete free-hearted gentleman of athens thy very bountiful good lord and master his health is well sir i am right glad that his health is well sir and what hast thou there under thy cloak pretty flaminius faith nothing but an empty box sir which in my lord's behalf i come to entreat your honour to supply who having great and instant occasion to use fifty talents hath sent to your lordship to furnish him nothing doubting your present assistance therein la 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 <laughs> nothing doubting says he alas good lord a noble gentleman tis if he would not keep so good a house many a time and often i had dined with him and told him on it and come again to supper to him of purpose to have him spend less and yet he would embrace no counsel take no warning by my coming every man has his fault and honesty is his i had told him on it but i could ne'er get him from it re-enter servant with wine flaminius i have noted thee always wise here's to thee your lordship speaks your pleasure 
I have observed thee always for a towardly prompt spirit, give thee thy due, <laughs> and one that knows what belongs to reason, and canst use the time well, if the time use thee well, good parts in thee. To servant. Get you gone, sirrah. Exit servant. Draw nearer, honest Flaminius. Thy lord's a bountiful gentleman, but thou art wise, and thou knowest well enough, although thou comest to me, that this is no time to lend money, especially upon bare friendship without security. Here's three solidaris for thee. Good boy, wink at me, and say, thou sawest me not. Fare thee well. Is it possible the world should so much differ, and we alive that lived? Fly, damned baseness, to him that worships thee. Throwing the money back. <laughs> now I see thou art a fool, and fit for thy master. Exit. May these add to the number that may scold thee. Let molten coin be thy damnation, thou disease of a friend, and not himself. Has friendship such a faint and milky heart, it turns in less than two nights? O oh, you gods, I feel master's passion. This slave, unto his honour, has my lord's meat in him. Why should it thrive and turn to nutriment, when he is turned to poison? O oh, may diseases only work upon it, and when he's sick to death, let not that part of nature, which my lord paid for, be of any power to expel sickness, but prolong his hour. Exit. Act three, scene two. A public place. Enter Lucilius with three strangers. Who, the Lord Timon? He is my very good friend and an honourable gentleman. We know him for no less, though we are but strangers to him. But I can tell you one thing, my lord, and which I hear from common rumours. Now Lord Timon's happy hours are done and past, and his estate shrinks from him. Fie, no, do not believe it. He cannot want for money. But believe you this, my lord, that not long ago one of his men was with Lord Lucillus to borrow so many talents, nay, urged extremely for it, and showed what necessity belonged to it, and yet was denied. How? I tell you, denied, my lord. What a strange case was that! Now, before the gods, I am ashamed on't. Denied that honourable man! There was very little honour showed in't. For my own part, I must needs confess I have received some small kindnesses from him, as money, plate, jewels, and such like trifles, nothing comparing to his. Yet, had he mistook him and sent to me, I should ne'er have denied his occasion so many talents. Enter Servilius see by good hap yonder's my lord i have sweat to see his honour my honoured lord servilius you are kindly met sir fare thee well commend me to thy honourable virtuous lord my very exquisite friend may it please your honour my lord hath sent ha what has he sent i am so much endeared to that lord he's ever sending how shall i thank him thinkest thou and what has he sent now has only sent his present occasion now, my lord, requesting your lordship to supply his instant use with so many talents. I know his lordship is but merry with me. He cannot want fifty-five hundred talents. But in the meantime he wants less, my lord. If his occasion were not virtuous, I should not urge it hath so faithfully. Dost thou speak seriously, Servilius? Upon my soul tis true, sir what a wicked beast was i to disfurnish myself against such a good time when i might have shown myself honourable how unluckily it happened that i should purchase the day before for a little part and undo a great deal of honoured servilius now before the gods i am not able to do the more beast i say i was sending to use lord timon myself these gentlemen can witness but I would not for the wealth of Athens, I had done't now. Commend me bountifully to his good lordship, 
and I hope his honour will conceive the fairest of me, because I have no power to be kind. And tell him this from me, I count it one of my greatest afflictions, say, that I cannot pleasure such an honourable gentleman. Good Sir Villius, will you befriend me so far as to use mine own words to him? Yes, sir, I shall. I'll look you out a good turn, Sir Villius. Exit Sir Villius. True as you said, Timon is shrunk indeed, and he that's once denied will hardly speed. Exit. Do you observe this, Hostilius? Aye, too well. Why, this is the world's soul, and just to the same piece is every flatterer's spirit. Who can call him his friend that dips in the same dish? For, in my canoeing, Timon has been this lord's father, and kept his credit with his purse, supported his estate. Nay, Timon's money has paid his men their wages. He ne'er drinks, but Timon's silver treads upon his lip. And yet, oh, see the monstrousness of man when he looks out in an ungrateful sheep. He does deny him, in respect of his, what charitable men afford to beggars. Religion groans at it. For mine own part, I never tasted Timon in my life, nor came any of his bounties over me, to mark me for his friend. Yet I protest, for his right noble mind, illustrious virtue, and honourable courage, had his necessity made use of me, I would have put my wealth into donation, and the best half should have returned to him. So much I love his heart. But I perceive men must learn now with pity to dispense, for a policy sits above conscience. Exeunt. Act three, scene three. A room in Sepronius' house. Enter Sepronius, and a servant of Timon's. Must he needs trouble me int? Hm. Above all others? He might have tried Lord Lucius or Lucellus, and now Ventidius is wealthy too, whom he redeemed from prison. All these owe their estates unto him. My lord, they have all been touched and found base metal, for they have all denied him. How have they denied him? Has Ventidius and Lucellus denied him? And does he send to me? Three? Hum! It shows but little love or judgment in him. Must I be his last refuge? His friends, like physicians, thrive, give him over. Must I take the cure upon me? Has much disgraced me in't? I'm angry at him, that might have known my place. I see no sense for it, but his occasion might have wooed me first. For, in my conscience, I was the first man that e'er received gift from him. And does he think so backwardly of me now, that I'll requite its last? No, so it may prove an argument of laughter to the rest, and mongst lords I be thought a fool. I'd rather than the worth of thrice the sum, had sent to me first, but for my mind's sake, I'd such a courage to do him good. But now return and with their faint reply this answer join, Who baits mine honour shall not know my coin. Exit. Excellent. Your lordship's a goodly villain. The devil knew not what he did when he made man politic. He crossed himself by it. And I cannot think but, in the end, the villainies of man will set him clear. How fairly this lord strives to appear foul takes virtuous copies to be wicked like those that under hot ardent zeal would set whole realms on fire of such a nature is his politic love this was my lord's best hope now all are fled save only the gods now his friends are dead doors that were ne'er acquainted with their wards many a bounteous year must be employed now to guard sure their master and this is all a liberal course allows 
who cannot keep his wealth must keep his house exit act three scene four a hall in timon's house enter two servants of varro and the servant of lucius meeting titus hortensius and other servants to timon's creditors waiting his coming out well met good morrow titus and hortensius the like to you kind varro lucius what do we meet together ay and i think one business does command us all for mine is money so is theirs and ours enter philotus and sir philotus too good day at once welcome good brother and what do you think the hour labouring for nine so much is not my lord seen yet not yet i wonder aunt he was wont to shine at seven ay but the days are waxed shorter with him you must consider that a prodigal course is like the sun's but not like his recoverable i fear tis deep as winter in lord timon's purse that is one may reach deep enough and yet find little i am of your fear for that i'll show you how to observe a strange event your lord sends now for money most true he does and he wears jewels now of timon's gift for which i wait for money it is against my heart mark how strange it shows timon in this should pay more than he owes and even as if your lord should wear rich jewels and send money for him i'm weary of this charge the gods can witness i know my lord hath spent of timon's wealth and now in gratitude makes it worse than stealth yes mine's three thousand crowns what's yours five thousand mine tis much deep and it should seem by the sum your master's confidence was above mine else surely had his equals enter flaminius one of lord timon's men flaminius sir a word pray is my lord ready to come forth no indeed he is not we attend his lordship pray signify so much i need not tell him that he knows you are too diligent exit flaminius enter flavius in a cloak muffled ha is not that his steward muffled so he goes away in a cloud call him call him do you hear sir by your leave sir what do ye ask of me my friend we wait for certain money here sir ay if money were as certain as your waiting twere sure enough why then preferred you not your sums and bills when your false masters eat of my lord's meat then they could smile and fawn upon his debts and take down the interest into their gluttonous moors you do yourselves but wrong to stir me up let me pass quietly believed my lord and i have made an end i have no more to reckon he to spend ay but this answer will not serve if twill not serve tis not so base as you for you serve knaves exit oh what does his cashiered worship mutter no matter what he's poor and that's revenge enough who can speak broader than he that has no house to put his head in such may rail against great buildings enter servilius oh here's servilius now we shall know some answer if i might beseech you gentlemen to repair some other hour i should derive much from it for ticked of my soul my lord leads wondrously to discontent his comfortable temper has forsook him he's much out of health and keeps his chamber many do keep their chambers are not sick and if it be so far beyond his health methinks he should the sooner pay his debts and make a clear way to the gods good gods we cannot take this for answer sir within servilius help my lord my lord enter timon in a rage flaminius following what are my doors opposed against my passage have i been ever free and must my house be my retentive enemy my jail the place which i have feasted does it now like all mankind show me an iron heart put in now titus my lord here is my bill here's mine and mine my lord and ours my lord all our bills 
Knock me down with him. Cleave me to the girdle. Alas, my lord. Cut my heart in sums. Mine fifty talents. Tell out my blood. Five thousand crowns, my lord. Five thousand drops pays that. What's yours and yours? My lord. My lord. Tear me, take me, and the gods fall upon you. Exit. Faith, I perceive our masters may throw their caps at their money. These debts may well be called desperate ones, for a madman owes them. Exeunt. Re-enter Timon and Flavius. They've even put my breath from me, the slaves. Creditors, devils. My dear lord. What if it should be so? My lord. I'll have it so. My steward. Here, my lord. So, fitly, go, bid all my friends again, Lucius, Lucullus, and Sempronius. All, Sarah, all. I'll once more feast the rascals. Oh, my lord, you only speak from your distracted soul. There is not so much left to furnish out a moderate table. Be it not in thy care. Go, I charge thee. Invite them all. Let in the tide of knaves once more. My cook and I'll provide. Exeunt. Act three, scene five. The same. The Senate house. The Senate sitting. My lord, you have my voice to it. The fault's bloody. Tis necessary he should die. Nothing emboldens sin so much as mercy. Most true. The law shall bruise him. Enter Alcibiades with attendance. Honor, health, and compassion to the Senate. Now, Captain? I am a humble suitor to your virtues, for pity is the virtue of the law, and none but tyrants use it cruelly. It pleases time and fortune to lie heavy upon a friend of mine, who in hot blood hath stepped into the law, which is past depth to those that without heed do plunge into it. He is a man setting his fate aside of comely virtues, nor did he soil the fact with cowardice an honour in him which buys out his fault but with a noble fury and fair spirit seeing his reputation touched to death he did oppose his foe and with such sober and unnoted passion he did behave his anger ere twas spent as if he had but proved an argument you undergo too strict a paradox striving to make an ugly deed look fair your words have took such pains as if they labored to bring manslaughter into form and set quarrelling upon the head of valor which indeed is valor misbegot and came into the world when sects and factions were newly born he's truly valiant that can wisely suffer the worst that man can breathe and make his wrongs his outsides to wear them like his raiment carelessly and ne'er prefer his injuries to his heart to bring it into danger if wrongs be evils and enforce us kill what folly tis to hazard life for ill my lord you cannot make gross sins look clear to revenge is no valour but to bear my lords then under favour pardon me if i speak like a captain why do fond men expose themselves to battle and not endure all threats sleep upon it and let the foes quietly cut their throats without repugnancy if there be such valour in the bearing what make we abroad why then women are more valiant that stay at home if bearing carry it and the ass more captain than the lion the felon loaden with irons wiser than the judge if wisdom be in suffering o oh my lords as you are great be pitifully good who cannot condemn rashness in cold blood to kill i grant is sin's extremest gust but in defence by mercy tis most just to be in anger is impiety but who is man that is not angry weigh but the crime with this you breathe in vain in vain his service done at Lacedaemon and Byzantium were a sufficient briber for his life. What's that? I say, my lords, he has done fair service, and slain in fight many of your enemies. How full of valour did he bear himself in the last conflict, and made plenteous wounds? He has made too much plenty with them. He's a sworn rioter. He has a sin that often drowns him, and takes his valour prisoner. 
if there were no foes that were enough to overcome him in that beastly fury he has been known to commit outrages and cherish factions tis inferred to us his days are foul and his drink dangerous he dies hard fate he might have died in war my lords if not for any parts in him though his right arm might purchase his own time and be in debt to none yet more to move you take my deserts to his and join them both and for i know your reverend ages love security upon my victories all my honours to you upon his good returns if by this crime he owes the law his life why let the war received in valiant gore for law is strict and war is nothing more we are for law he dies urge it no more on height of our displeasure friend or brother he forfeits his own blood that spills another must it be so it must not be my lords i do beseech you know me how call me to your remembrances what i cannot think but your age has forgot me it could not else be i should prove so base to sue and be denied such common grace my wounds ache at you do you dare our anger tis in few words but spacious in effect we banish thee for ever banish me banish your dotage banish usury that makes the senate ugly if after two days shine athens contain thee attend our weightier judgment and not to swell our spirit he shall be executed presently exeunt senators now the gods keep you old enough that you may live only in bone that none may look on you i'm worse than mad i have kept back their foes while they have told their money and let out their coin upon large interest i myself rich only in large hurts all those for this is this the balsam that the usuring senate pours into captain's wounds banishment it comes not ill i hate not to be banished it is a cause worthy my spleen and fury that i may strike at athens i'll cheer up my discontented troops and lay for hearts tis honour with most lands to be at odds soldiers should brook as little wrongs as gods exit act three scene six the same a banqueting room in timon's house music tables set out servants attending enter divers lords senators and others at several doors the good time of day to you sir i also wish it to you i think this honourable lord did but try us this other day upon that were my thoughts tiring when we encountered i hope it is not so low with him as he made it seem in the trial of his several friends it should not be by the persuasion of his new feasting i should think so he hath sent me an earnest inviting which many my near occasions did urge me to put off but he hath conjured me beyond them and i must needs appear in like manner was i in debt to my importunate business but he would not hear my excuse i am sorry when he sent to borrow of me that my provision was out i am sick of that grief too as i understand how all things go every man hears so what would he have borrowed of you a thousand pieces a thousand pieces what of you he sent to me sir oh here he comes enter timon and attendants with all my heart gentlemen both and how fare you ever at the best hearing well of your lordship the swallow follows not summer more willing than we your lordship aside nor more willingly leaves winter such summer birds are men gentlemen our dinner will not recompense this long stay feast your ears with the music awhile if they will fare so harshly as the trumpet sound we shall to it presently i hope it remains not unkindly with your lordship that i returned you an empty messenger oh sir let it not trouble you 
my noble lord ah my good friend what cheer my most honourable lord i am e'en sick of shame that when your lordship this other day sent to me i was so unfortunate a beggar think not on sir if you had sent but two hours before let it not cumber your better remembrance the banquet brought in come bring in all together all covered dishes royal cheer i warrant you doubt not that if money and the season can yield it how do you do what's the news alcibiades is banished hear you of it alcibiades banished tis so be sure of it how how i pray you upon what my worthy friends will you draw near i'll tell you more anon here's a noble feast toward this is the old man still wilt hold wilt hold it does but time will and so i do conceive each man to his stool with that spur as he would to the lip of his mistress your diet shall be in all places alike make not a city feast of it to let the meat cool ere we can agree upon the first place sit sit the gods require our thanks you great benefactors sprinkle our society with thankfulness for your own gifts make yourselves praised but reserve still to give lest your deities be despised lend to each man enough that one need not lend to another for were your godheads to borrow of men men would forsake the gods make the meat be beloved more than the man that gives it let no assembly of twenty be without a score of villains if there sit twelve women at a table let a dozen of them be as they are the rest of your fees o gods the senators of athens together with the common lag of people what is amiss in them you gods make suitable for destruction for these my present friends as they are to me nothing so in nothing bless them and to nothing are they welcome uncover dogs and lap the dishes are uncovered and seem to be full of warm water what, what does, does his lordship, lordship mean i know not. not may you a better feast never behold you not of mouth friends smoke and lukewarm water is your perfection this is timon's last who stuck and spangled with your flattery washes it off and sprinkles in your faces your reeking villainy throwing the water in their faces live loath and long most smiling smooth detested parasites courteous destroyers affable wolves meek bears you fools of fortune trench your friends times flies cap and knee slaves vapours and minute jacks of man and beast the infinite malady crust you quite o'er what dost thou go soft take thy physic first thou too and thou stay i will lend thee money borrow none throws the dishes at them and drives them out what all in motion henceforth be no feast where a villain's not a welcome guest burn house sink athens henceforth hated be of time and man and all humanity exit re-enter the lords senators and company how now my lords know you the quality of lord timon's fury push did you see my cap i have lost my gown he's but a mad lord and not but humour sways him he gave me a jewel the other day and now he has beat it out of my hat did you see my jewel did you see my cap here tis here lies my gown let's make no stay lord timon's mad i feel't upon my bones one day he gives us diamonds next day stones excellent end of act three act four of timon of athens by william shakespeare this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One Without the Walls of Athens. Enter Timon. Oh, 
let me look back upon the other wall that girdles in those wolves dive in the earth and fence not Athens matrons turn incontinent obedience fail in children slaves and fools pluck the grave wrinkled senate from the bench and minister in their steads to general filth convert on the instant green virginity do it in your parents eyes bankrupts hold fast rather than render back out with your knives and cut your trusters throats bound servants steal large-handed robbers your grave masters are and pill by law made to thy master's bed thy mistresses of the brothel son of sixteen pluck the lined crutch from thy old limping sire with it beat out his brains ah oh, piety and fear religion to the gods peace justice truth domestic awe night rest and neighborhood instruction manners mysteries and trades degrees observances customs and laws decline to your confounding contraries and let confusion live plagues incident to men your potent and infectious fevers heap on athens ripe for stroke thou cold sciatica cripple our senators that their limbs may halt as lamely as their manners lust and liberty creep in the minds and marrows of our youth that gainst the stream of virtue they may strive and drown themselves in riot itches blains so all the athenian bosoms and their crop be general leprosy breath infect breath that their society as their friendship may be merely poison nothing i'll bear from thee but nakedness thou detestable town take thou that too with multiplying bands time and will to the woods where he shall find the unkindest beast more kinder than mankind the gods confound hear me you good gods all the athenians both within and out that wall and grant as time ungrows his hate may grow to the whole race of mankind high and low amen exit act four scene two athens a room in timon's house enter flavius with two or three servants hear you master steward where's our master are we undone cast off nothing remaining alack my fellows what should i say to you let me be recorded by the righteous gods i am as poor as you such a house broke so noble a master fallen all gone and not one friend to take his fortune by the arm and go along with him as we do turn our backs from our companion thrown into his grave so his familiars to his buried fortunes slink all the way leave their false vows with him like empty purses picked and his poor self a dedicated beggar to the air with his disease of all shunned poverty walks like contempt alone more of our fellows 
Enter other servants. All broken implements of a ruined house. Yet do our hearts wear Tormund's livery, that see I be our faces. We are fellows still, serving a lot in sorrow. Leaked is our bark, and we poor mates stand on the dying deck, hearing the surge's threat. We must all part into the sea of air. Good fellows all, the latest of my wealth I'll share amongst you. Wherever we shall meet, for Timon's sake, let's yet be fellows. Let's shake our heads and say, as twere a knell unto our master's fortunes. We have seen better days, let each take some. Nay, put out all your hands, not one word more. Thus part we rich in sorrow, parting poor. Servants embrace, and part several ways. Oh, the fierce wretchedness that glory brings us! Who would not wish to be from wealth exempt? Since riches point to misery and contempt, who would be so mocked with glory, or to live but in a dream of friendship? To have his pomp and all what state compounds, but only painted like his varnished friends? Poor honest lord, bought low by his own heart, undone by goodness. Strange, unusual blood, when man's worst sin is, he does too much good. Who, then, dares to be half so kind again, for bounty, that makes gods, does still mar men? My dearest lord, blessed to be most accursed, rich only to be wretched, Thy great fortunes are made thy chief afflictions. Alas, kind lord, he's flung in rage from this ingrateful seat of monstrous friends, nor has he with him to supply his life or that which can command it. I'll follow and inquire him out. I'll ever serve his mind with my best will. Whilst I have gold, I'll be his steward still. Exit Act 4, Scene 3 Woods and Cave Near the seashore. Enter Timon from the cave. O oh, blessed breeding sun, draw from the earth rotten humidity, blow thy sister's orb, infect the air. Twinned brothers of one womb, whose procreation, residence, and birth scarce is divident, touch them with several fortunes, the greater scorns the lesser. Not nature, to whom all sores lay siege, can bear great fortune, but by contempt of nature. Raise me this beggar, and deny that lord, the senator shall bear contempt hereditary, the beggar native honour. It is the pasture lards the rudder's sides, the want that makes him lean. Who dares, who dares, in purity of manhood, stand upright and say, This man's a flatterer? If one be, so are they all, for every grease of fortune is smoothed by that below. The learned pate ducks to the golden fool. All is oblique, there is nothing level in our cursed natures but direct villainy. Therefore, be abhorred all feasts, societies, and throngs of men. His semblable, yea, himself, time and disdains. Destruction fang mankind. Earth, yield me roots. Digging. Who seeks for better of thee, sauce his palate with thy most operant poison. What is here? Gold, yellow, glittering, precious gold. No gods, I am no idle votarist. Roots, you clear heavens. Thus much of this will make black, white, foul, fair, wrong, right, base, noble, old, young, coward, valiant. Ha, <laughs> you gods, why this, what this, you gods? Why, this will lug your priests and servants from your sides, pluck stout men's pillows from below their heads. This yellow slave will knit and break religions, bless the accursed, Make the whore leprosy adored, place thieves and give them title, knee and approbation, with senators on the bench. This is it that makes the wappened widow wed again. She whom the spittlehouse and ulcerous sores would cast a gorge at, this in bams and spices to the April day again. Come, damned earth, thou common whore of mankind, that puts odds among the root of nations. I will make thee do thy right nature. March afar off. Ha, a drum! Thou art quick, but yet I'll bury thee. Thou'lt go, strong thief, when gouty keepers of thee cannot stand. Nay, stay thou out for earnest. Keeping some gold. Enter Alcibiades, with drum and fife, in warlike manner. Prinia and Timandra. What art thou there? Speak. A beast, as thou art. The canker gnaw thy heart for showing me again the eyes of men. What is thy name? 
is man so hateful to thee that art thyself a man i am misanthropus and hate mankind for thy part i do wish thou wert a dog that i might love thee something i know thee well but in thy fortunes am unlearned and strange i know thee too and more than that i know thee i not desire to know follow thy drum with man's blood paint the ground gules gules religious canons civil laws are cruel then what should war be this fell whore of thine hath in her more destruction than thy sword for all her cherubin look thy lips rot off i will not kiss thee then the rot returns to thine own lips again how came the noble time into this change as the moon does by wanting light to give but then renew i could not like the moon there were no sons to borrow of noble timon what friendship may i do thee none but to maintain my opinion what is it timon promise me friendship but perform none if thou wilt not promise the gods plague thee for thou art a man if thou dost perform confound thee for thou art a man i have heard in some sort of thy miseries thou sawest them when i had prosperity i see them now then was a blessed time as thine is now held with a brace of harlots is this the athenian minion whom the world voiced so regardfully art thou timandra yes be a whore still they love thee not that use thee give them diseases leaving with thee their lust make use of thy salt hours season the slaves for tubs and bats bring down rose-cheeked youth to the tub fast and the diet hang thee monster pardon him sweet timandra for his wits are drowned and lost in his calamities i have but little gold of late brave timon the want thereof doth daily make revolt in my penurious band i have heard and grieved how cursed athens mindless of thy worth forgetting thy great deeds when neighbor states but for thy sword and fortune trod upon them i prithee beat thy drum and get thee gone i am thy friend and pity thee dear timon how dost thou pity him whom thou dost trouble i had rather be alone why fare thee well here is some gold for thee keep it i cannot eat it when i have laid proud athens on a heap warst thou gainst athens ay timon and have cause the gods confound them all in thy conquest and thee after when thou hast conquered why me timon that by killing of villains thou wast born to conquer my country put up thy gold go on here's gold go on be as a planetary plague when jove will o'er some high-viced city hang his poison in the sick air let not thy sword skip one pity not honoured age for his white beard he is a usurer strike me the counterfeit matron it is her habit only that is honest herself's a bawd let not the virgin's cheek make soft thy trenchant sword for those milk paps that through the window bars bore at men's eyes are not within the leaf of pity writ but set them down horrible traitors spare not the babe whose dimples smiles from fools exhaust their mercy think it a bastard whom the oracle hath doubtfully pronounced thy throat shall cut and mince it saw remorse swear against objects put armour on thine ears and on thine eyes whose proof nor yells of mothers maids nor babes nor sight of priests in holy vestments bleeding shall pierce a jot there's gold to pay soldiers make large confusion and thy fury spent confounded be thyself speak not be gone hast thou gold yet i'll take the gold thou givest me not all thy counsel dost thou or dost thou not heaven's curse upon thee give us some gold good timon hast thou more enough to make a whore forswear her trade and to make whores abroad hold up you sluts your aprons mountain you are not oathable although i know you'll swear terribly swear into strong shudders and to heavenly agues the immortal gods that hear you spare your oaths i'll trust to your conditions be whores still and he whose pious breath seeks to convert you be strong in whore allure him burn him up let your close fire predominate his smoke and be no turncoats yet may your pain six months be quite contrary 
and thatch your poor thin roofs with burdens of the dead, some that were hanged. No matter, wear them, betray with them, whore still, paint, till a horse may mire upon your face, a pox of wrinkles. Well, well more, more gold. gold. What, what then? then? Consumption so in hollow bones of man, strike their sharp shins and mar men's spurring, crack the lawyer's voice, that he may never more false title plead, nor sound his quillets shrilly. Whore the flamen that scolds against the quality of flesh and not believes himself. Down with the nose, down with it flat. Take the bridge quite away of him that his particular to foresee smells from the general wheel. Make curled pate ruffians bald, and let the unscarred braggarts of the war derive some pain from you. Plague all, that your activity may defeat and quell the source of all erection. There is more gold. Do you damn others, and let this damn you, and ditches grave you all. More counsel with more money, money bounteous Timon. More whore, more mischief first. I have given you earnest. Strike up the drum towards Athens. Farewell, Timon. If I thrive well, I'll visit thee again. If I hope well, I'll never see thee more. I never did thee harm. Yes, thou spokest well of me. Callest thou that harm? Men daily find it. Get thee away, and take thy beagles with thee. We but offend him. Strike! Drum beats. Exont Alcibiades, Prinia, and Timandra. Oh, oh, that nature, being sick of man's unkindness, should yet be hungry. Digging. Common mother. Thou whose womb, unmeasurable and infinite breast, teems and feeds all, whose self-same metal whereof thy proud child, arrogant man, is puffed, engenders the black toad and adder blue, the gilded newt and eyeless venomed worm, with all the abhorred births below crisp heaven, whereon Hyperion's quickening fire doth shine, Yield him who all thy human sons do hate from forth thy plenteous bosom one poor root. In seer, thy fertile and conceptuous womb, let it no more bring out ingrateful men. Go great with tigers, dragons, wolves, and bears, teem with new monsters. Whom thy upward face hath to the marbled mansion all above never presented. Oh, a root! Dear thanks! Dry up thy marrows, vines, and plough-torn leaves, Whereof ingrateful man with licorice draughts And morsels unctuous greases his poor mind, That it from all consideration slips. Enter a Pimantus. More man! Plague! Plague! I was directed hither. Men report thou dost affect my manners, and dost use them. Tis then, because thou dost not keep a dog whom I would imitate, consumption catch thee. This is in thee a nature but infected, a poor unmanly melancholy, sprung from change of fortune. Why this spade, this place, this slave-like habit? and these looks of care thy flatterers yet wear silk drink wine lie soft hug their diseased perfumes and have forgot that ever time and was shame not these woods by putting on the cunning of a carper be thou a flatterer now and seek to thrive by that which has undone thee hinge thy knee and let his very breath whom thou'lt observe blow off the cap praise his most vicious strain and call it excellent thou wast told thus thou gavest the ears like tapsters that bid welcome to knaves and all approachers tis most just that thou turn rascal hadst thou wealth again rascal should have t do not assume my likeness were i like thee i'd throw away myself thou hast cast away thyself being like thyself 
a madman so long now a fool what think'st that the bleak air thy boisterous chamberlain will put this shirt on warm will these mossed trees that have outlived the eagle page thy heels and skip where thou point'st out will the cold brook <sighs> candied with ice coddle thy morning taste to cure thy o'ernight surfeit call the creatures whose naked natures live in all the spite of reekful heaven whose bare unhoused trunks to the conflicting elements exposed answer mere nature bid them flatter thee oh, thou shalt find a fool of thee depart <laughs> i love thee better now than e'er i did i hate thee worse why thou flatterst misery i flatter not but say thou art a caitiff why dost thou seek me out to vex thee mm. always a villain's office or a fool's dost please thyself int ay what a knave too <laughs> if thou didst put this sour cold habit on to castigate thy pride twere well but thou dost it enforcedly thou'dst courtier be again wert thou not beggar will in misery outlives uncertain pomp is crowned before the one is filling still never complete the other at high wish best state contentless as the distracted and most wretched being worse than the worst content thou shouldst desire to die being miserable not by his breath that is more miserable thou art a slave whom fortune's tender arm with favour never clasped but bred a dog hadst thou like us from our first swathe proceeded the sweet degrees that this brief world affords to such as may the passive drugs of it freely command thou wouldst have plunged thyself in general riot melted down thy youth in different beds of lust and never learned the icy precepts of respect but followed the sugared game before thee but myself who had the world as my confectionery the mouths the tongues the eyes and hearts of men at duty more than i could frame employment that numberless upon me stuck as leaves do on the oak have with one winter's brush fell from their boughs and left me open bare for every storm that blows i to bear this that never knew but better is some burden thy nature did commence in sufferance time hath made thee hard in it why shouldst thou hate men they never flatter thee what hast thou given if thou wilt curse thy father that poor rag must be thy subject who in spite put stuff to some she-beggar and compounded thee poor rogue hereditary hence be gone if thou hadst not been born the worst of men thou hadst been a knave and flatterer art thou proud yet ay that i am not thee ay that i was no prodigal ay that i am one now were all the wealth i have shut up in thee i'd give thee leave to hang it get thee gone that the whole life of athens were in this thus would i eat it eating a root here yeah, i will mend the feast offering him a root first mend my company take away thyself so i shall mend me known by the lack of thine tis not well mended so it is but botched if not i would it were <sighs> what wouldst thou have to athens thee thither in a whirlwind if thou wilt tell them there i have gold look so i have here is no use for gold the best and truest for here it sleeps and does no hire it harm where liest the nights timon under that's above me where feedst thou a days apamantus <laughs> where me stomach finds mate <laughs> rather 
where I ate it. Good poison were obedient, and knew my mind. Where wouldst thou send it? To sauce thy dishes. <laughs> the middle of humanity thou never knewest, but the extremity of both ends. When thou wast in thy guilt and thy perfume, they mocked thee for too much curiosity. In the rags thou knowest none, but art despise it for the contrary. There's a meddler for thee. Eat it. On what I hate I feed not. Oh, dost eat a meddler? Aye, though it look like thee. And thou hast hated meddlers sooner, thou shouldst have loved thyself better now. What man didst thou ever know unthrift that was beloved after his means? Who, without those means thou talkst of, didst thou ever know beloved? Myself. I understand thee. Thou hadst some means to keep a dog. What things in the world can thou nearest compare to thy flatterers? Women nearest. But men, men are the things themselves. What wouldst thou do with the world, Apamantus, if it lay in thy power? <sighs> Give it to the beasts to be rid of the men. Wouldst thou have thyself fall in the confusion of men, and remain a beast with the beasts? Aye, Timon. A beastly ambition, which the gods grant thee to attain to. If thou wert the lion, the fox would beguile thee. If thou wert the lamb, the fox would eat thee. If thou wert the fox, the lion would suspect thee, and peradventure thou wert accused by the ass. If thou wert the ass, thy dullness would torment thee, and still thou livest but as a breakfast to the wolf. If thou wert the wolf, thy greediness would afflict thee, and oft thou shouldst hazard thy life for thy dinner. Wert thou the unicorn, pride and wrath would confound thee, and make thine own self the conquest of thy fury. Wert thou a bear, thou wouldst be killed by the horse. Wert thou a horse, thou wouldst be seized by the leopard. Wert thou a leopard, thou wert german to the lion, and the spots of thy kindred were jurors on thy life. All thy safety were remotion, and thy defence absence. What beast couldst thou be that were not subject to a beast? And what a beast art thou already, that seest not thy loss in transformation? If thou couldst please me with speaking to me, thou mightst have hit upon it here. The commonwealth of Athens is become a forest of beasts. How has the ass broke the wall, that thou art out of the city? Oh, yonder comes a poet and a painter, the plague of company light upon thee. I will fear to catch it and give way. <laughs> when I know not what else to do, I'll see thee again. When there is nothing living but thee, thou shalt be welcome. I had rather be a beggar's dog than Epimentus. Ah, thou art the cap of all the fools alive. Would thou were clean enough to spit upon. A plague on thee! Thou art too bad to cuss. All villains that do stand by thee are pure. <sighs> there is no leprosy but what thou speakst. If I name thee, I'll beat thee, but I should infect my hands. I would my tongue could rot them off. Away, thou issue of a mangy dog. Collar does kill me that thou art alive. I swoon to see thee. What thou wouldst bust. Away, thou tedious rogue. I am sorry I shall lose a stone by thee. Throws a stone at him. <clears throat> Best. Slave. <sighs> Todd. Rogue, rogue, rogue. I am sick of this false world. And we love naught but even the mere necessities upon it. Then, Timon. Presently prepare thy grave. Lie where the light foam of the sea may beat thy gravestone daily. Make thine epitaph that death in me at others' lives may laugh. To the gold. O thou sweet king killer, and dear divorce twixt natural son and sire, thou bright defiler of Hymen's purest bed, thou valiant Mars. Thou ever young, fresh, loved, and delicate wooer, Whose blush doth thaw the consecrated snow That lies on Dian's lap, Thou visible god, 
that soldrest close impossibilities and makes them kiss that speaks with every tongue to every purpose o oh, thou touch of hearts think thy slave man rebels and by thy virtue set them into confounding odds that beasts may have the world in empire would twere so but not till i am dead i'll say thou hast gold thou wilt be thronged to shortly thronged to ay thy back i prithee live and love thy misery long live so and so die Exit Apaimantus. I am quit. More things like men. Eat, Timon, and abhor them. Enter Banditti. Where should he have this gold? It is some poor fragment, some slender sword of his remainder. The mere want of gold and the falling from of his friends drove him into this melancholy. It is noised he hath a mass of treasure. Let us make the assay upon him if he care not for it he will supply us easily if he covetously reserve it how shalls get it true for he bears it not about him tis hid is not this he where, where? tis his description he i know him save, save thee timon now thieves soldiers, soldiers not thieves both too and women's sons we, we are not, are not thieves, thieves but, but men that, that much, much do, do want. want your greatest want is you want much of meat why should you want behold the earth hath roots within this mile break forth a hundred springs the oaks bear mast the briars scarlet hips the bounteous housewife nature on each bush lays her full mace before you want why want we cannot live on grass on berries water as beasts and birds and fishes nor on the beasts themselves the birds and fishes you must eat men yet thanks i must you con that you are thieves professed that you work not in holier shapes for there is boundless theft in limited professions rascal thieves here's gold go suck the subtle blood of the grape till the high fever seethe your blood to froth and so scape hanging trust not the physician his antidotes are poison and he slays more than you rob take wealth and lives together do villainy do since you protest to do it like workmen i'll example you with thievery the sun's a thief, and with his great attraction robs the vast sea. The moon's an arrant thief, and her pale fire she snatches from the sun. The sea's a thief, whose liquid surge resolves the moon into salt tears. The earth's a thief, that feeds and breeds by a composture stolen from general excrement. Each thing's a thief. The laws, your curb and whip in their rough power have unchecked theft. Love not yourselves. Away, rob one another. There is more gold. Cut throats. All that you meet are thieves. To Athens go. Break open shops. Nothing can you steal, but thieves do lose it. Steal no less, for this I give you. And gold confound you howsoe'er. Amen has almost charmed me from my profession by persuading me to it tis in the malice of mankind that he thus advises us not to have us thrive in our mystery i'll believe him as an enemy and give over my trade let us first see peace in athens there is no time so miserable but a man may be true exeunt banditti enter flavius o oh, you gods is yon despised and ruinous man my lord full of decay and failing o oh, monument and wonder of good deeds evilly bestowed what an alteration of honour has desperate want made what viler thing upon the earth than friends who can bring noblest minds to basest ends
How rarely does it meet with this time's guise when man was wished to love his enemies. Grant I may ever love, and rather woo those that would mischief me and those that do. He has caught me in his eye. I will present my honest grief unto him, and, as my lord, still serve him with my life, my dearest master. Away! What art thou? Have you forgot me, sir? Why dost ask that? I have forgot all men. Then, if thou grant thou art a man, I have forgot thee. An honest poor servant of yours. Then I know thee not. I never had an honest man about me, I. All I kept were knaves, to serve in meat to villains. The gods are witness. Ne'er did poor steward wear a truer grief for his undone lord than mine eyes for you. What, dost thou weep? Come nearer. Then I love thee, because thou art a woman, and disclaimst flinty mankind, whose eyes do ne'er give but through lust and laughter. Pity sleeping, strange times, that weep with laughing, not with weeping. I beg of you to know me, good my lord, to accept my grief, and whilst this poor wealth lasts, to entertain me as your steward still. Had I a steward, so true, so just, and now so comfortable? It almost turns my dangerous nature mild. Let me behold thy face. Surely this man was born of woman. Forgive my general and acceptless rashness, you perpetual sober gods. I do proclaim one honest man. Mistake me not, but one. No more, I pray. And he's a steward. How fain would I have hated all mankind. And thou redeemst thyself. But all save thee I fell with curses. Methinks thou art more honest now than wise. For by oppressing and betraying me thou mightst have sooner got another service. For many so arrive at second masters upon their first lord's neck. But tell me true, for I must ever doubt though ne'er so sure. Is not thy kindness subtle, covetous, if not a user in kindness, and as rich men deal gifts, expecting in return twenty for one? No, my most worthy master, in whose breast doubt and suspect, alas, are placed too late. You should have feared false times when you did feast. Suspect still comes when an estate is leased, that which I show heaven knows is merely love, duty, and zeal to your unmatched mind care of your food and living, and, believe it, my most honoured lord, for any benefit that points to me, either in hope or present, I'd exchange for this one wish, that you had power and wealth to requite me by making rich yourself. Look thee, tis so, thou singly honest man, here, take. The gods out of my misery have sent thee treasure. Go, live rich and happy, but thus conditioned, Thou shalt build from men, hate all, curse all, show charity to none, but let the famished flesh slide from the bone ere thou relieve the beggar. Give to dogs what thou deniest to men. Let prisons swallow em, debts wither em to nothing. Be men like blasted woods, and may diseases lick up their false bloods. And so farewell and thrive. Oh, let me stay and comfort you, my master. If thou hatest curses, stay not. Fly while thou art blessed and free. Ne'er see thou man, and let me ne'er see thee. Exit, Flavius. Timon retires to his cave. End of Act 4《 act v of Timon of Athens by William Shakespeare this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org act v scene one the woods before Timon's cave enter poet and painter Timon watching them from his cave as I took note of the place, it cannot be far where he abides. What's to be thought of him? Does the rumour hold for true that he's so full of gold? Certain. 
Alcibiades reports it. Phrynea and Timandra had gold of him. He likewise enriched poor straggling soldiers with great quantity. Tis said he gave unto his steward a mighty sum. Then this breaking of his has been but a try for his friends. Nothing else. You shall see him a palm in Athens again, and flourish with the highest. Therefore tis not amiss we tender our loves to him in this supposed distress of his. It will show honestly in us, and is very likely to load our purposes with what they travail for, if it be a just true report that goes of his having. What have you now to present unto him? Nothing at this time but my visitation. Only I will promise him an excellent peace. I must serve him so too. Tell him of an intent that's coming toward him. Good as the best. Promising is the very air of the time. It opens the eyes of expectation. Performance is ever the duller for his act. And, but in the plainer and simpler kind of people, the deed of saying is quite out of use. To promise is most courtly and fashionable. Performance is a kind of will a testament which argues a great sickness in his judgment that makes it. Timon comes from his cave, behind. Aside. Excellent workman. Thou canst not paint a man so bad as is thyself. I am thinking what I shall say I have provided for him. It must be a personating of himself, a satire against the softness of prosperity, with a discovery of the infinite flatteries that follow youth and opulency. Aside. Must thou need stand for a villain in thine own work? Wilt thou whip thine own faults in other men? Do so. I have gold for thee. Nay, let's seek him. Then do we sin against our own estate, when we may profit meet, and come too late. True, when the day serves before the black corn and night, find what thou wants by free and offered light. Come. Aside. I'll meet you at the turn. What a god's gold, that he is worshipped in a baser temple than where swine feed. Tis thou that rigs the bark and ploughs the foam settlest admired reverence in a slave to thee be worship and thy saints for i be crowned with plagues that thee alone obey fit i meet them coming forward hail worthy timon our late noble master have i once lived to see two honest men sir having often of your open bounty tasted hearing you were retired your friends fallen off whose thankless natures o oh, abhorred spirits not all the whips of heaven are large enough what to you whose star-like nobleness gave life and influence to their whole being i am rapt and cannot cover the monstrous bulk of this ingratitude with any size of words let it go naked men may see it the better you that are honest by being what you are make them best seen and known he and myself have travailed in the great shower of your gifts and sweetly felt it ay you are honest men we are hither come to offer you our service most honest men why how shall i requite you can you eat roots and drink cold water no what, what we, we can, can do, do we'll do, we'll do to, to do, do you service, service. You're honest men. You've heard that I have gold. I am sure you have. Speak truth. You're honest men. So it is said, my noble lord, but therefore come not my friend nor I. Good honest men. Thou drawest a counterfeit best in all Athens. Thou art indeed the best. Thou counterfeitst most lively. So, so, my lord. E'en so, sir, as I say. And for thy fiction, why, thy verse swells with stuff so fine and smooth that thou art even natural in thine art. But for all this, my honest-natured friends, I must needs say you have a little fault. Marry, tis not monstrous in you, neither wish I you take much pains to mend. Beseech your, your honour to, to make it known to us. us. You'll take it ill. Most, Most thankfully, thankfully, my lord. lord. Will you indeed? Doubt, Doubt it not, not worthy lord. lord. There's never a one of you but trusts a knave that mightily deceives you. Do we, my lord? Aye. And you hear him cog, see him dissemble, 
Know his gross patchery. Love him, feed him, keep him in your bosom. Yet remain assured that he's a made-up villain. I know none such, my lord. Nor I. Look you, I love you well. I'll give you gold. Read me these villains from your companies. Hang them or stab them. Drown them in a draught. Confound them by some course and come to me. I'll give you gold enough. Name, Name them, them, my lord. lord. Let's, Let's know them. them. You that way and you this. But two in company, each man apart, all single and alone. Yet an arch villain keeps him company. If where thou art, two villains shall not be, come not near him. If thou wouldst not reside, but where one villain is, then him abandon. Hence, pack, there's gold. You came for gold, ye slaves. To painter. You have worked for me, there's payment for you, hence. To poet. You are an alchemist, make gold of that, out, rascal dogs. Beats them out, and then retires to his cave. Enter Flavius, and two senators. It is in vain that you would speak with Timon, for he is set so only to himself that nothing but himself which looks like man is friendly with him. Bring us to his cave. It is our part and promise to the Athenians to speak with Timon. At all times alike men are not still the same. T'was time and griefs that framed him thus. Time, with his fairer hand, offering the fortunes of his former days, the former man may make him. Bring us to him, and chance it as it may. Here is his cave. Peace and content be here. Lord Timon, Timon, look out and speak to friends, the Athenians, by two of their most reverend senate. Greet thee. Speak to them, noble Timon. Timon comes from his cave. Thou son that comforts, born, speak and be hanged, for each true word a blister and each false be as a cauterizing to the root of the tongue consuming it with speaking worthy timon of none but such as you and you of timon the senators of athens greet thee timon i thank them and would send them back the plague could i but catch it for them oh forget what we are sorry for ourselves in thee the senators with one consent of love entreat thee back to athens who have thought on special dignities which vacant lie for thy best use and wearing. They confess toward the forgetfulness too general, gross, which now the public body, which doth seldom play the recounter, feeling in itself a lack of Timon's aid, hath sense withal of its own fail, restraining aid to Timon and send forth us to make their sorrowed render together with a recompense more fruitful than their offence can weigh down by the dram ay even such heaps and sums of love and wealth as shall to thee blot out what wrongs are theirs and write in thee the figures of their love ever to read them thine you witch me in it surprise me to the very brink of tears Lend me a fool's heart and a woman's eyes, and I'll beweep these comforts, worthy senators. Therefore so please thee to return with us, and of our Athens, thine and ours, to take the captainship, thou shalt be met with thanks, allowed with absolute authority, and thy good name live with authority. So soon we shall drive back of Alcibiades the approaches wild, who, like a boar too savage, doth root up his country's peace, and shakes his threatening sword against the walls of Athens. Therefore, Timon. Well, sir, I will. Therefore I will, sir, thus. If Alcibiades kill my countrymen, let Alcibiades know this of Timon. The Timon cares not. But if he sack fair Athens, and take our goodly aged men by the beards, giving our holy virgins to the stain of contumelious, beastly, mad-brained war. Then let him know, and tell him Timon speaks it, in pity of our aged and our youth. I cannot choose but tell him that I care not, and let him take that worst, for their knives care not while you have throats to answer. For myself, 
there's not a whitland unruly camp but i do prize it at my love before the reverentest throat in athens so i leave you to the protection of the prosperous gods as thieves to keepers stay not all's in vain why i was writing of my epitaph it will be seen to-morrow my long sickness of health and living now begins to mend and nothing brings me all things go live still be alcibiades your plague you his and last so long enough we speak in vain but yet i love my country and am not one that rejoices in the common wreck as common breed doth put it that's well spoke commend me to my loving countrymen these words become your lips as they pass through them and enter in our ears like great triumphers in their applauding gates commend me to them and tell them that to ease them of their griefs their fears of hostile strokes their aches losses their pangs of love with other incident throes that nature's fragile vessel doth sustain in life's uncertain voyage i will some kindness do them i'll teach them to prevent wild alcibiades wrath i like this well he will return again i have a tree which grows here in my close that mine own use invites me to cut down and shortly i must fell it tell my friends tell athens in the sequence of degree from high to low throughout that whoso please to stop affliction let him take his haste come hither ere my tree hath felt the axe and hang himself i pray you do my greeting trouble him no further thus you still shall find him come not to me again but say to athens timon hath made his everlasting mansion upon the beached verge of the salt flood who once a day with his embossed froth the turbulent surge shall cover thither come and let my gravestone be your oracle lips let sour words go by and language end what is amiss plague and infection mend graves only be men's works and death their gain son hide thy beams timon hath done his reign retires to his cave his discontents are unremovably coupled to nature our hope in him is dead let us return and strain what other means is left unto us in our dear peril it requires swift foot exeunt act five scene two before the walls of athens enter two senators and a messenger thou hast painfully discovered are his files as full as thy report i have spoke the least besides his expedition promises present approach we stand much hazard if they bring not timon i met a courier one mine ancient friend whom though in general part we were opposed yet our old love made our particular force and made us speak like friends this man was riding from alcibiades to timon's cave with letters of entreaty which imported his fellowship is the cause against your city in part for his sake moved here come our brothers enter the senators from timon no talk of timon nothing of him expect the enemy's drum is heard and fearful scouring doth choke the air with dust in and prepare ours is the fall i fear our foes the snare exeunt act five scene three the woods timon's cave in the rude tomb seen enter a soldier seeking timon by all description this should be the place who's here speak ho no answer what is this timon is dead who hath outstretched his span some beast reared this there does not live a man 
dead, sure, and this his grave. What's on this tomb I cannot read. The character I'll take with wax. Our captain have in every figure skill, an aged interpreter, though young in days. Before proud Athens he's set down by this, whose fall the mark of his ambition is. Exit. Act five, scene four. Before the walls of Athens. Trumpets sound. Enter Alcibiades with his powers. Sound to this coward and lascivious town our terrible approach. A parley sounded. Enter senators on the walls. Till now you have gone on and filled the time with all licentious measure, making your wills the scope of justice. Till now myself and such as slept within the shadow of your power have wandered with our traversed arms and breathed our sufferance vainly. Now the time is flush, when crouching marrow in the bearer strong cries of itself, No more! Now breathless wrong shall sit and pant in your great chairs of ease, and Percy insolence shall break his wind with fear and horrid flight. Noble and young, when thy first griefs were but a mere conceit, ere thou hadst power or we had cause of fear, we sent to thee to give thy rages balm, to wipe out our ingratitude with loves above their quantity. So did we woo transformed time into our city's love by humble message and by promised means. We were not all unkind, nor all deserved the common stroke of war. These walls of ours were not erected by their hands from whom you have received your griefs, nor are they such that these great towers, trophies, and schools should fall for private faults in them nor are they living who were the motives that you first went out shame that they wanted cunning in excess hath broke their hearts march noble lord into our city with thy banners spread by decimation and a tithe of death if thy revenge is hunger for that food which nature loathes take thou the destined tenth and by the hazard of the spotted die let die the spotted all have not offended for those that were it is not square to take on those that are revenges crimes like lands are not inherited then dear countrymen bring in thy ranks but leave without thy rage spare thy athenian cradle and those kin which in the bluster of thy wrath must fall with those that have offended like a shepherd approach the fold and cull the infected forth but kill not all together what thou wilt thou rather shalt enforce it with thy smile than hew to it with thy sword set but thy foot against our rampired gates and they shall ope so thou wilt send thy gentle heart before to say thou'lt enter friendly throw thy glove or any token of thine honour else that thou wilt use the wars as thy redress and not as our confusion all thy powers shall make their harbour in our town till we have sealed thy full desire then there's my glove descend and open your uncharged ports those enemies of timon's and mine own whom you yourselves shall set out for reproof fall and no more and to atone your fears with my more noble meaning not a man shall pass his quarter or offend the stream of regular justice in your city's bounds but shall be rendered to your public laws at heaviest answer tis most nobly spoken descend and keep your words the senators descend and open the gates enter soldier my noble general timon is dead entombed upon the very hem of the sea and on his gravestone this in sculpture which with wax i brought away whose soft impression interprets for my poor ignorance reads the epitaph here lies a wretched corpse of wretched soul bereft seek not my name a plague consume you wicked caitiffs left 
here lie i timon who alive all living men did hate pass by and curse thy fill but pass and stay not here thy gate these well express in thee thy latter spirits though thou abhorrest in us our human griefs scorn'st our brains flow and those our droplets which from niggard nature fall yet rich conceit taught thee to make vast neptune weep for aye on thy low grave on faults forgiven dead is noble timon of whose memory hereafter more bring me into your city and i will use the olive with my sword make war breed peace make peace stint war make each prescribe to each other as each other's leech let our drums strike exeunt end of act five and end of timon of athens by william shakespeare